So today we'll take a look at the gate math from synthesizers.com. So the gate math is a programmable clock divider, multiplier, and even a sequencer. Of course, it's also available as a 5U hardware module, but it can be very useful and interesting to use also in VCV rack, especially within a so-called fixed rack, and we will see this later on. So the way this module works is that we have four outputs, right? Each of them we can program individually and we have multiple modes or options to choose from. Now in VCV Rack, there are two ways we can program things. We can do this the hardware way, or we can do this the VCV way, and I will show you both. So first of all, the gate math has an uh, internal clock, but I find it easier to use with an external one. So for now, we'll just use an LFO. You see here we have the clock input, and I will use the first output to gate one kick all module that I have here. Now by default it's set to simple mode, right? And in simple mode we get divisions of 2, 4, 8, and 16. But let's say that now I want to divide this clock by 5, right? So if I zoom in a bit, you can see here we have the different modes and you see here we have 3, 4, and 5, division of 5. So I just move to this mode here and then you can see number 5 is on the third position. So here we have the different options, positions, right? If I change this to three, now it will be set to division of five. And all we have to do is click the button that we want uh, to set, the channel that we want to set. If I click it now, now it will be a clock division of five. Right, again, we chose the mode and then the right option position. Right, so now we have it divided by five clock and I will use another output here to um, trigger another kick and let's say that in this case we want a division of seven. Right, so seven is here, right in this mode and you can see now it's in position number two. So I move this switch to position number two and then again all I have to do is click the button next to it. And now we have here division of five and here division of seven. Right, the same with multiplication. So again, I use another kick all here. And then the multiplication is here on the left. And let's say I want a multiplication of 1.5. Right, so this is the mode and 1.5 is in the first position. So I change the option to the first position. And then I just click the button. Right, and we have division of five, division of seven and multiplication and 1.5. Right now, to be honest, this works great in hardware, but in VCV, doing this with the mouse is not really fun. So in VCV, we can set up almost everything in the right click menu, right? You can see we have the different outputs, one, two, three, and four, and the different programs and other options all in the right click menu, right? So for example, if I want program one or output one, um, to be, let's say, a division of uh, three. I can just choose this, and if I hold control, the menu will not close. So I hold control, I choose a division of three, and now it's directly changed, right? And I don't have to deal with the buttons and the switches, right? Let's say program two will be a division of four, and let's say program three will be a division of two. Right, so now we have things set up from the right click menu instead of dealing with the knob and the position of the options. Right, so this makes things much easier in VCV and this is not all because we can also save snapshots of the different configurations. So now this configuration right with this clock division is set to slot number zero. Again, if I zoom in a bit, 
right, you see we have here slot number zero, zero. If I move to slot number one, now I can set different configurations. So here, for example, let's say the vision of 1.33 and then here the vision of, uh, or let's say a multiplication of 1.5 and here a multiplication of two. Right, and now I can move or switch between these configurations, between the zero slot and the one slot. And of course, this has also a CV input. By the way, if you are not using an external clock, this knob here becomes a clock um, tempo, right? So you, you have to use a CV input to change the configurations. But I find it just easier to use an external clock. Right, and then you have all the different configurations that you save. So this is the basics of how this module works. You can set each output with a different option and even switch between different configurations. But now let's dig deeper. So let's look at the random modes. Here I have plats as my voice going through some delay. Again, I'm using an LFO as an external clock. And we have different random modes, right? You can find them here with a um, knob or again in the right click menu. Right, we have the different random modes. Um, for example, I can set the first output. This one will trigger plats to let's say a 50% chance to output a trigger. Right, you can see this here with the light. Right, so now it's more or less random triggers, again, synced with this LFO. And by the way, I want to show you quickly, there are different gate modes, right? Here we have different options. We have gate, binary, and trigger. I find binary the best, but let me show you all three of them. This is gate. Um, I'm not so sure if it's a bug or if it's a feature, but this is gate mode. If I choose trigger, for example, and again, you have to click set. Now we have a trigger and in the right click menu, you can choose also the trigger width. And again, I find binary mode the best. If I change this, you can see we just get a longer gate, which works best with most modules. So I usually have this at um, or in binary mode. Right, so again, now we have a random source to trigger things. We can have the second output also with random triggers. Again, from the right click menu, I will go with 25% chance. And this will trigger another voice that I have here. Um, a few modules from synthesizer.com, oscillator, going through a filter, two envelopes, some delay. Now we also have exclusive randomness, right? In this case, um, only one output will be active. And this is great um, for something like linear drumming. So here I have, here I have a few uh, drums, right? And I have the four outputs triggering them. If I set all four outputs, again, to exclusive randomness, let's say of 33%, right? Only one, only one um, drum voice will play at a time and they will all have some randomness to them. And again, this is great for linear drumming. I have here also a bass. I'm processing the drums with a string VCO. Let's take a look now at the sequencing modes, right? They are here if you are using the knob, or again in the right click menu, we have different modes. If I choose or set, for example, the first two outputs to have a step, a sequence of two steps, Right, again, I'm holding control so the menu is not closing. Right, now you can see the outputs just alternate, right? We have a two-step sequence, basically. But we can have something a bit more interesting if we set output two to be a sequence of three steps. Right, now we have a three over two or a two over three sequence, which is great for sequencing, um, right? With, for a gate sequencer, you can see this also here on the scope. Right, but it can also be quite interesting when mixing them into a pitch 
sequence, right? So if I take this, in this case, it will be a yellow cable, right? And I mix them, I have here the mixer from the same collection. Let's look at it also on the scope, right? The levels, we set the levels of the steps and you can see we have something that looks very similar to a pitch sequence, right? When uh, we have one gate, we have one level, another gate, different level. And when they are both up, we have a third level, right? So we have different values that will generate a, a pitch sequence, right? And we can, of course, uh, use this to sequence a voice. I have here just an oscillator going through a filter again from the same collection and a delay. And I will use the quantizer from the same collection to quantize this. Right, and we have a pitch sequence. And again, the levels on the mixer will very much change the result. And again, we have also configurations, right? So first of all, what I will do, I will set the third output to be, uh, or to have a division of eight. You will see why in a second, right? And this is the configuration number zero. If I move to the second one, right? In this case, let's have a different sequence of three over four, right? For the first two outputs. And again, output three will be a division of eight. Right, so now we have two different configurations. And now I can use this clock division to switch between the configurations, right? I have here the ADDR sequencer that is set with two sets of values and I can use this, right? To switch between the configurations. different sequences and this will work really nicely also with randomness right so here again in this case I have the first two outputs set to a sequence of three steps right again mixing them into a pitch sequence the voice that I have here is just again an oscillator going through some panning or not panning but I'm cross fading between the waves Right, so this is the sequence we have. And the third output here is set to randomness of 50%. Right, so sometimes it will add more voltage, more voltage, higher pitch. I can mix it in. Right, so we can um, use also randomness or add randomness to this. I have here another voice, a drone, again with two oscillators from the same collection, a filter, some noise, a nice reverb. Also sequences that are perfect for drums. Now in this case I have a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat all coming from three macro oscillator two modules. Right, and in this case I will just switch between the drum patterns. I will do this uh, with the mouse here. Right, this is the drum mode and now I have one, two, and three. Right, so we have hi-hats, snare, and kick. And again we have different options here depending on the position. Right, so we have different patterns and of course we can also mix and match them so I can take for example the kick pattern from the first slot. Right, I have here also a bass um, again with the same, a few modules from the same collection, oscillator, two envelopes, filter, some delay. Right, and in this case we can have also different patterns, right, let me activate it. Right, but we have more um, patterns. We have the drum modes, but we have also patterns that we can choose from.
this is nice, but we have also alternative patterns. Right, I like this one before. And of course you can also choose if you want to skip the first step. This is also a mode that you have. Or if you want to invert it. Right, so it plays more on the offbeat. But I liked it how it was before here. And of course this can work really nicely also for pitch, just like we've seen before. In this case I have it set to the drum modes and I'm mixing the voltage right and you can see into a pitch sequence. I have here again an oscillator going through a filter, some delay. Right, so you can use the drum patterns also to generate pitch. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the gate math works really nicely inside the so-called fixed rack, which is basically a fixed set of modules you can use multiple times experimenting with various techniques, similarly to how you will approach working with hardware. You can even lock the modules or the position of the modules right from the view menu. Right and now you cannot move the modules, so you have really a fixed rack to work with. Um, and this is the fixed track I have set up with mostly modules from synthesizer.com, but also a few additional modules. So again, there are two gate math modules. Um, there are multiple oscillators, multiple filters, right? There is modulation if it's from the LFO++ from the synthesizers.com collection, or I have here an LFO, some randomness. Right, there is even sequencing, I have here the sequential controller, a sequential switch, right, there are various um, utilities, a quantizer, a slew limiter, VCAs, right, envelopes, and um, there is even noise here, a polarizer, some logic, there is a sampler even, and of course some effects, folding, delays, chorus, and the reverb. Right, so this is your homework. There's a link in the description to where you can download this fixed track, download it, try to experiment with it for a few days or weeks even, and see what you can learn from this. I'm going to show you a few examples in a second, but first of all, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.